Hi friends, in this video we will discuss about the similarities and the differences of endocytosis and exocytosis that is endocytosis versus exocytosis. Earlier I have done a detailed video on endocytosis as well as exocytosis. Please do refer it before you go with the similarities and dissimilarities. So, now we will discuss about the similarities of endocytosis and exocytosis. So, both these processes that is endocytosis and exocytosis are forms of active transport. That is, both uses energy to transport the particles whether it's in or out. That is, with the help of energy, they are able to transport these particles. So, in both the processes, whether it's endocytosis or exocytosis, it is the transport of materials. And in both these processes, they involve a formation of vesicles. So, the similarities of endocytosis and exocytosis is that these two processes are active processes, that is active transport. So, they involve a energy transport. And these two processes involve a formation of vesicles. So, these two are the similarities in endocytosis and exocytosis. So, now let us discuss the difference between endocytosis and exocytosis. So, endocytosis is the transportation of substances from outside to inside a cell that is from external environment. These substances are moved to inside a cell. So, after the cell particles reaches inside the cell, they are broken down into smaller substances and finally they are eliminated from the cell or used by the cell. So, endocytosis is the process by which these particles move from outside environment to inside a cell. Whereas, the process of exocytosis is the transport of materials from inside to the outside, that is from inside a cell to the outside environment. So, in this mechanism, there involves the formation of vesicles. So, these vesicles are bound to the cell memory. So, this condense are being expelled later to the outside environment and this is the process of exocytosis. So, in endocytosis, the transport occurs from outside environment to inside whereas in exocytosis, the process is from inside to outside. So, both these processes are exactly opposite to each other. Next, we will discuss about the types of endocytosis. So, there are three types of endocytosis which include phagocytosis, pinocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis. So, now let us discuss the first type of endocytosis which is Phagocytosis. Phagocytosis is the process of entry of large molecules into the cell. That is, large molecules including microorganisms are entered from outside environment to inside by a process called phagocytosis. So, phagocytosis is often known as cell eating. That is, large molecules are entered through this process. Next is pinocytosis. Pinocytosis is a process through which the cell is drinking. That is, it is often known as cell drinking. So, water-soluble particles enter from outside to inside cell by a process called pinocytosis. The last type of endocytosis is the receptor mediated endocytosis. So, 
The receptor mediated endocytosis is a process in which receptors are present in the cell membrane. So, only when these specific molecules that are specific to the receptors are allowed to be transported in these processes. So, the three types of endocytosis is phagocytosis, pinocytosis, and receptor mediated endocytosis. Now, let us discuss the three types of exocytosis. It is constructive exocytosis, regulated exocytosis, and lysosome mediated endocytosis. Constructive exocytosis is a type of exocytosis that is, it transports materials from inside to outside. So, in constructive exocytosis, this transport occurs only when the membrane is, that is, the vesicle membrane is surrounded by membrane proteins. So, Constrictive exocytosis occurs when these vesicles are surrounded by membrane proteins. The next type of exocytosis is regulated exocytosis. So in regulated exocytosis, the secretory cells become secretory vessels only when they reach an extracellular signal. That is, when these secretory cells receive an extracellular signal, they become secretory vessels. The next type of exocytosis is lysosome mediated exocytosis. So, in this type of exocytosis, they involve an involvement of lysosome, which is an organelle. So, these are the three types of exocytosis. That is constructive exocytosis, regulated exocytosis, and lysosome mediated exocytosis. So, as we discussed earlier in similarities, these both processes, that is endocytosis and exocytosis, is active transports. That is, it is both a form of active transport. So, they use energy. In endocytosis, they use some energy. Whereas, in exocytosis, a lot of energy is being used in transportation. So, this is the difference between endocytosis and exocytosis. In endocytosis, some energy is only being used. Whereas, in exocytosis, a lot of energy is being used. Now, we will discuss the difference in endocytosis and exocytosis based on the function. First, we will discuss about the functions of endocytosis. So first, we will discuss about phagocytosis examples. So phagocytosis is a process in which large molecules are entered inside. So in this process, it involves the breaking down as well as the elimination of microbial antigens. This is a main function of endocytosis. Another function is that protozoans such as amoeba, it is through this process that is phagocytosis, it gets its food. So, the pseudopodia is being spread over the food and is engulfed through a process called phagocytosis. Next, we will discuss about the function of pinocytosis. The small intestine has intestinal villi. So, it absorbs these nutrients by the process called endocytosis. Next is the examples of receptor-mediated endocytosis. The transportation of ion transference as well as the absorption of cholesterol which is born to bad cholesterol is both functions of receptor mediated endocytosis. So now let us discuss the functions of exocytosis. So the transportation of proteins and lipids is needed since 
this cell membrane is been damaged after endocytosis that is after a pinocytosis and a phagocytosis the cell membrane gets damaged so for the repair there involves the transportation of proteins and lipids so this transportation is done by exocytosis the transportation of glucagon and insulin hormones is also done by exocytosis that is this transportation occurs from pancreas to liver and this is then broken down and transported to the blood vessels the transportation of signals for cell cell communication is also done by exocytosis and the most important function is that the synaptic transmission of information in neurons is done by exocytosis earlier i have done a video on types as well as the functions of exocytosis as well as endocytosis if you have any doubts please do refer it to if you like the video please like and share with your friends please do subscribe to our channel biotech simplified